In this episode of Hot Lap, I'm going to show you guys what some of the best first modifications for a brand new 2018 GT are. Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at some of the first modifications that you might consider doing to your new 2018 GT Mustang. We call these mods the first five mods, and of course, they're just suggestions to help you get started. Like usual, you have a ton of different options when it comes to brands or what direction you want to take your build in. So I picked out five modifications in total that all benefit the 2018 in some way, shape, or form. We're going to show you an example of each modification and give you a good look at the car before and after each part is installed, just so you can see what kind of difference the parts make. And I will say right now that the car that we have in the shop here with us is not a base model. It does have some options like Magneride and Active Exhaust. We just wanted to show you guys that even if you do go with some of these options on your car, you still can modify it if you want to. And the mods we'll talk about today are good for all 2018s, regardless of trim, upgrades, or any of those details. You'll just have to make sure that you pick up the correct items for your car, depending on what options you have. But before we get into any of this, I have to say that if you like videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything. Now let me show you what I always consider one of the first best modifications you can do to your car, no matter what generation it is. Lowering springs always make the list of suggested first mods. There's something that a lot of Mustang owners like to do early on, and for good reason. Lowering springs give handling performance benefits and looks improvements too. They lower the center of gravity, they help the car stay more centered and more balanced, and they help with nosedive during braking and squatting under acceleration. When it comes to the 2018 Mustang though, the Magneride option enters the picture. If you have Magneride, you need to pick up a Magneride compatible spring. The car that we have in the shop with us today does have Magneride, and so that changes the lowering spring options quite a bit. Ford Performance already have a Magneride compatible spring available, so that's exactly what we installed on this car. And just for general information, the big construction difference, without getting too technical here, is in the rear springs. The two rear springs are wound the opposite direction of each other. That means that both rear springs and isolators are side specific. That's just the obvious and upfront difference, and that's without even getting into the spring rates of a Magneride compatible spring. The Ford Performance W lowering springs are gonna lower the car 20 millimeters all the way around, which is about three quarters of an inch. When you compare this drop to a typical lowering spring, this might not sound like it's gonna make much difference at all. I will admit that this is a small drop in the world of lowering springs, but it is still gonna give you a great look and it does make a difference for sure. If you have Magneride, you can't really lower your car too much. And luckily enough, the 2018s don't look like they're lifted from the factory, so a smaller drop does make enough of a difference. And not to mention, Magneride is more about handling performance than the overall looks of the car anyway. The lowering springs are a bit of a more involved install. They take a few hours. You will need a spring compressor and of course, an alignment after the install. And I'd say that you need some basic experience before trying to install them yourself. That leads us to the next modification that we'll talk about, which is exhaust. Most people who buy a Mustang want it to sound like a Mustang, loud, powerful, and healthy like a muscle car should. Upgrading your exhaust gives your Mustang a completely new attitude. Exhaust upgrades quickly became a topic of discussion with the addition of the active exhaust option in 2018. It's not an inexpensive upgrade, and some people that went for this option may want to just keep their stock exhaust. But for those of you that have active exhaust and still want to check out the aftermarket world, hold on one second because not only does this car have Magneride, but it also has active exhaust. We installed an active exhaust Corsa Extreme cat back with black tips on this car and take a listen to how it sounds. keep your active exhaust, which I'm sure everyone does, you need an active exhaust cat back to install, and this cat back fits that bill. When it comes to sound, the Corsa Extreme is one of the loudest cat backs that you can pick up. The cool part about adding the Corsa Extreme with active exhaust is that you can quiet it down with quiet mode. It almost sounds stock in quiet mode. 
so you really get a wide range of exhaust notes and volume with an active exhaust Corsa cat back. This catback is made from 304 stainless steel. It has Corsa's double helix X pipe. It's a three inch catback with four and a half inch black chrome tips, and it does come with adapters so you can install it with a stock exhaust like we did here, or you can opt for a full three inch upgrade if you wanted to. It's definitely one of the top of the line choices when it comes to exhaust. And a catback install is pretty easy, even for someone that doesn't have much experience. You'll probably need some help dropping the stock cat back down since it is a little bit heavy, but other than that, it's a very simple install. Next, we'll head into the car to look at another upgrade option. Another modification that I usually suggest for any MT-82 car is a shifter upgrade. The remote shifter location of the MT-82 has long been known to cause issues like lockout, even with the improvements that Ford has given over the years. Upgrading your shifter can help with this, but you need something other than just any shifter upgrade. I picked the Barton Hybrid 3 shifter for this job because it's a completely upgraded unit and not just a short shifter handle. It's CNC machined built aluminum, stainless steel, has weather tight seals, a solid stainless steel front bushing and rear bracket that are made to stop vibration and deflection. It's an entire shifter replacement. You will need to lower the transmission in order to complete the install. You don't have to drop it out completely, but you will need to lower it some. The work of the install is totally worth the upgrade in my opinion. This shifter gives you mounting options. You can mount to the transmission or to the body of the car. If you mount to the trans, you'll run the solid linkage and eliminate the tie to the body of the car. If you mount to the body, you'll use a different bracket and the upgraded linkage will help the shifter to be remote but still keep accurate shifts. The linkage that I'm talking about with this shifter is a different type of linkage. It has a three bushing design. And of course, this shifter works with the stock shift knob. The next mods we'll look at go hand in hand and so we'll talk about them together. A cold air intake and tuner, easy to install and always give good performance gains when paired together. A tune, no matter what point in time you choose to do it, is always a great modification. You don't have to change anything on the car, it doesn't require you to install anything, and a tune doesn't require any tools, it just takes time to download, and then boom, you have horsepower and torque delivered. And when it comes to cold air intakes, no matter what style you do, they're usually better looking under the hood than the factory intake. They're a mod that anyone can install, and when you pair them with a tune, they give nice performance benefits. We have the CNL Racer cold air intake on the car here and use the SCT RevX tuner to get a VMP tune on the car. And first things first, let's talk about Dyna results. Our stock pull with our manual 2018 GT gave us numbers of 433 horsepower and 390 foot pounds of torque. After we installed the CNL cold air intake and paired it with the VMP tune, we saw numbers of 455 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds of torque. That makes for a peak gain of 22 horsepower and 8 foot-pounds of torque. Even better though, we saw curve gains of 26 horsepower and 20 foot-pounds of torque at 6700 RPM, and again 20 foot-pounds of torque in the lower RPM at 3200. Pairing a cold air intake with a tune is always recommended. The tune is going to help you get the most performance possible from the cold air intake, and a tune by itself, even without a cold air intake, makes a big difference in the car. Tuning the car will not only deliver horsepower and torque, but it's going to change the drivability and the throttle response and give you a more fun car to drive. Taking a look at the CNL intake, it's very easy to install. It is a tune required intake, which means that you'll need to pair a tune with the intake in order to keep your car running correctly. This is an open element style intake. It completely eliminates the air box. You also eliminate the built-in mass airflow housing with this intake. CNL gives you a separate Castelluna MAF housing instead that you'll swap your factory sensor into. The intake tube is made from roto-molded plastic and the intake comes with a reusable oiled filter. Then you have the RevX tuner here with a VMP tune. Loading a tune on a car is very easy. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes and simply requires you to plug the device into the car's OBD2 port, connect to a Wi-Fi and hit a few buttons and then just wait for the tuner to do its thing. The RevX tuner is great to work with. It connects to your Wi-Fi, so once you connect it to your Wi-Fi and log in, the tuner will auto-update. You no longer have to plug in for firmware updates anymore. This is PC compatible, it will read and clear your trouble codes, and you can data log with it or display real-time gauges if you want it to. This tuner comes with one custom tune from VMP. So what you'll do is submit some information about your car to VMP, and they'll have a calibrator write you a custom tune for your car. And VMP has a great reputation for being able to make power and torque, but still deliver a tune that has great drivability. So those are gonna be my suggestions when it comes to the first few mods for a 2018 GT Mustang. 
These are mostly performance based, but you also get some improvement in looks with the lowering springs. As usual, the mods that we talked about today in this video are just suggestions for you to help you out when you start to modify your 2018. And we also wanted to show you guys that even if you went with some options like Magnaride and Active Exhaust, you can still mod too if you want to. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below on what you would modify first on your new Mustang. Make sure you subscribe, and for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.